From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Enough of the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D, giving you a little coral spotlight on the frag tank. I know you guys are probably getting used to seeing this one, and I've heard a lot of uh, comments like, you know, Double D, what's up? I want to see the main tank. And I'm just going to let you know that there's an update on the main tank coming real soon. But, uh, you know, as we are, as hobbyists, we sit, we spend a lot of time looking at our tanks and looking at little changes. And, and I thought it was really interesting. This tank, as it progresses, I'm seeing a lot of things that differ from my main tank to this tank. So as I notice these things, I bring them here to you. So let's take a look at my little coral spotlight, which is going to be on the Waving Hand Zinnia. Now this is the Waving Hand Zinnia. It's different than the regular pulsing zinnia for obvious reasons. Uh, first of all, this one does not pulse, it waves. <laughs> and I won't get into the scientific name of it because that tends to confuse a lot of people. But uh, as I've mentioned on more than one occasion that I never had good luck with the flow in my main tank being uh, really uh, good at helping this coral be prosperous. But in this tank, it is just like exploding, and it's a beautiful coral. Highly recommended for the new Aquarius because it, it grows very nice and provides a lot of movement to the tank. But let's take a closer look at it. Now here you'll see that the waving hand zinnia, this, this zinnia has very large extending uh, branches, or rather you can call them tentacles, but they're and in relative flow, the branches will actually close up. And this is a really nice coral for absorbing a lot of the nutrients in the tank. You have to maintain a fine balance, not zero nutrients, not excessive nutrients. As I found, <laughs> I've been uh, dosing the tank with the uh, Polylabs uh, product recently, which is like definitely made a big difference in a coral, but at the same time, you'll see the obvious culprit is, you know, you get algae and it's very uh, hard to clean the algae in some of these spots, but later I'll probably pull that out. But the Reefroids has been like gangbusters to promoting the growth. And this of all my corals, the Zinnia. Um, I don't dose a lot, but uh, this is like exploded by leaps and bounds. So much that I've actually had the pulsing zinnia start to grow elongated. Look at that, and I'm just showing that so that you can see the uh, tentacle extension if you look real close. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. If you look really close, look at the branches on the zinnia. Not, not just pulsing, but they're really extended. And it's a beautiful coral. Um, this one has actually grown so fast around my pavona that you'll see the tentacles extending, the sweeper tentacles and the pavona, which I really don't see too often. But as this one gets close to it, these guys will defend themselves. You know, there's my bang eye card trying to be a reef hog, <laughs> camera hog. Usually I can't get a picture of him. <laughs> now he decides to be in the shot. I can never find him. I found out that that's where he hides when I can never find him. The other one is always out in the open. But anyway, to stay on topic, the Zinnia will be very, very aggressive in its growth. And that's kind of its way of defending itself. It will self-propagate itself, as you'll see down there. And all you have to do is I go in with my tweezers when I get those corals. And these are the boys that I use for my planted tanks. I haven't been using it as much for the planted tanks as I've been using it for this tank just to keep those zinnia under control. I had a pulsing zinnia grow right under this pavona and I just plucked it out at the base, try to get as close to the base as possible. If, if you look at these, you'll see when your light is at its brightest, it's pretty easy to get to the base and you pluck it out with those, uh, with those tweezers and you can actually attach it if you get a good piece of stalk. I, you can see that I attached it to uh, 
another stone. They don't do well with the plugs, I've noticed, whereas people do propagate them and attach them to plugs probably 90% of the time. Um, I noticed that if you use rock rubble, they do a much better job at adhering and uh, acclimating and it's a much better looking piece. As you can see, you don't see many plugs except for that one because that pavone is quickly growing over it. But the zinnias will spread at a rate that will trigger you know, other corals to either extend sweeper tentacles or to, to like die off. Um, but it's a beautiful coral. I don't want to say that that is a negative effect because it's like gardening. Anybody that has ever raised a garden, you get weeds. As weeds grow, you pull them out. <laughs> Just like that, corals, both the good and aggre the aggressive corals and non-aggressive corals have to be pruned back. And it's really easy to do. You just have to decide what your uh, aquascape is going to be. So that was a look at the Waving Hand Zinnia, a beautiful coral, easy to propagate, easy to control. It doesn't like a lot of flow, but it will acclimate and get accustomed to the flow in your tank. I've noticed that these grow the fastest where the flow is the slowest. You cannot even see that rock at the top where if you look at my earlier video from about three months ago, you could definitely see that pavona. Now you can barely see it. So I keep uh, plucking away at it and keeping it under control and it's a beautiful piece. So that was a look at the waving hand zinnia. You don't have to feed them directly, but they do well with feeding of uh, zoo, zooplankton or uh, phytoplanktonic foods in the water column, which is why since I've started adding the reef words, these guys have taken off. People, you got to be careful. I got to thank, uh, <laughs> I got to thank my, uh, my reef uh, fellow reefers, especially farm boy reef, uh, Ryan. Uh, put me on to that poly labs and I got it in my aquarium box from my homeboys at aquarium box yo this has taken off man I could not believe how fast it's grown also uh, I'm not gonna get into the other corals because I'm just kind of focusing on the zinnia but uh, don't add a lot you don't need a lot you don't need to go crazy it's not like you're feeding a dog it's a planktonic or a filter feeding coral food, which means you don't have to see it in the water column for it to be working. You need a very small amount. These corals, they don't eat like dogs and cats eat. <laughs> you know, sometimes people feed these corals like they feed a dog or cat, and they get by. This, this tank is only powered by my return pump. It's angled in a way that uh, distributes the flow uh, in one direction hard against the tank wall and the flow actually comes through the back and comes back to the tank. So if you see this, that, that return pump is facing the front of the glass. This one is blowing to the left, but the top is blowing to the right. So that is when you know you got good flow and these corals will do very well. So that is about all I'm going to say. I'm going to give you a little spotlight uh, zoom in shot. And I'll leave you with that. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I almost knocked my phone off. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, if I see you, I hope I see you guys at Reef of Palooza, which is coming up this month here in New York. Well, New Jersey, actually, but New York Reef of Palooza. I hope I see you guys there. And uh, give me a shout out. Uh, check me out on Instagram, DFB Aquatics. And until next time, see you when I see you. See you. See ya. I could drink.